This is Lab Medicine Rounds, a curated podcast for physicians, laboratory professionals, and students. I'm your host, Justin Kreuter, the Bowtie Bandit of Blood, a transfusion medicine pathologist at Mayo Clinic. Today, we're rounding with Dr. Laura Lee Langman, a professor of laboratory medicine pathology and consultant in the Division of Clinical Biochemistry at Mayo Clinic to discuss laboratory detection of opioids. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Langman. Pleasure to be here. Why is it important for a laboratory to detect and, and quantify opioids? I mean, I think that a lot of physicians have to do continuing education and understand a bit about opioids. Why is it important for the lab to get involved here? As you all know, there's a growing increase in the use and misuse of opioids, both illicit and licit and prescription opioids leading to an increased morbidity and mortality. The media used the term opioid epidemic to describe this phenomenon and well, kind of stuck. Prior to the COVID-19 epidemic, I don't think you could turn on a news broadcast or hear about the opioid epidemic. But just because you haven't heard much about it in the news recently doesn't mean it's gone away. Well, far from it in fact. If you actually look at preliminary data that suggests that there's actually been an increase in the opioid related overdoses during the COVID pandemic. At least 30 states have actually reported an increase in the opioid fatalities since the start of the pandemic. And of course, it's us, the laboratories, and it's our job to detect and identify the opioids. And well, somebody's got to do it, right? It's sort of the lab is really providing this assistance answer to clinicians about if opioids are in, in a patient system. What are the challenges that you have to navigate uh, as a laboratory that's really s specific to opioids? Is there anything different about how your process has to be or how you look at a test when you're running an opioid detection lab? You know, well, we all know opioids are primarily used to treat pain, right? And you probably need to really differentiate an opiate from an opioid. And people tend to use them interchangeably, but they're actually really different. What determines an opiate is chemistry. Opiates are, have a chemical structure similar to morphine. There's the natural opiates, and those are the things that, that are alkaloids that come from the, the resin of the poppy. So those are like morphine and codeine. Then there's the semi-synthetic opiates. Those are the ones that are created from the natural opiates. So morphine, like I said, but they're the things like hydromorphone, hydrocodone, oxycodone, oxymorphone, and heroin. Sorry guys, heroin is not naturally occurring. We actually make it. Then there's opioids. Opioids are determined by their pharmacology. They have a pharmacology like morphine. So they act like morphine. So all opiates are opioids. But those are the things that are fully synthetic opioids. So those are the things like the fentanyls and the methadones and the tramadols and the pentadols. So here's why it's challenging. If you're talking, you have to distinguish things that have a chemical structure that are like the opiates and the things that are opioids, which are completely different chemically, that's a huge challenge. One of the big challenges is the analytical component. How do you measure all of these things? So even when you talk about the prescription ones that are all very chemically different, now you have all of the non-prescription, all of the illicit ones that you hear about in the news and all of the things like the car fentanyls and all of those chemically ones that are very, very different. Now take that and add in the other thing that I haven't talked about yet, which is potency. If you have a comparison that things like morphine is sort of given a potency of one. And okay. some of them have a potency that can be a thousand times more potent, which means you need a thousand times less, which means you now have to find it at a concentration in the body that's at more or less a thousand times less. So you've got a range of potencies and a range of concentrations of a thousand, as well as chemical differences that are incredibly varied. So biggest challenge, analysis. When you talk about this, is it just kind of a detection, kind of like a pregnancy test, or is it very important to quantify as well? Well, it's actually a good question from the standpoint that the answer is both. Yes, you have to be able to identify that it's there. So yes or no, is it there or is it not there? 
And in some contexts, it's important to know how much is there because the ratio of, let's say, the parent drug to its metabolite can be very telling. So you do need to be able to do both aspects of it. That really kind of pushes us into kind of the clinical realm then. And could you help us get an understanding on how do you collaborate with other healthcare professionals? What are the physicians that you're interacting with? What's that context? Can you give us a little bit uh, on that? Yeah, collaboration, of course, is very important. And when I like to think about collaboration, I like to look at it from sort of the Mayo Classic Three Shield approach. If you look at the Three Shield approach, looking at the clinical part of it, really what we do touches just about every aspect of the clinical practice, okay? Like I said, opioids look at pain and Treatment of pain touches just about everybody. So we've worked with our Mayo Clinical colleagues and the major stakeholders at all sites to determine what they need, what are their expectations for what the lab can detect. We, and when I say we, I mean our laboratory, we've worked with groups that have created evidence-based practice guidelines and collaborated with national societies to establish what is the best practice on how and what to be looking for when we test our patient samples. And um, I did briefly mention before those illicit group of designer drugs that you hear about in the media, and we work with our local law enforcement and medical examiner's office to keep track of what's out there and what are being used out on the street and what's common and what's uncommon. For more laboratory education, including a listing of live conferences, webinars, and on-demand content, visit news.mayocliniclabs.com forward slash education. So is that kind of a parallel between, I I mean, these days, uh, we're recording this episode in early September 2020, and, uh, you know, a lot of discussion has been around lately about the evolution of COVID-19 testing. Is it really kind of the reality of what your work is like in terms of new, you know, illicit uh, street drugs that you're having to design new tests to detect? Is that a constant in your field? It, oh, yeah. It's definitely a constant changing uh, thing. You're sort of always chasing um, the latest thing that's out there. There's always something new that's being created, so you're always chasing it, yeah. That's fascinating. And so could you elaborate a little bit about that collaboration with law enforcement? Because that's a little bit unique, I think, to your area of the lab and maybe also in forensics as well. But other aspects of lab medicine and pathology doesn't have as much of that interaction. Most of the lab otherwise and pathologists are used to interacting with other physicians. What's that law enforcement interaction like? A lot of it is from the standpoint of bulletins and emails and, I don't want to say press releases, but kind of, we have biweekly meetings or things where you'll be, hey, this is what we've seen, this is what we've found, almost an informal kind of communication where we'll just sit down like every couple of weeks and say, this is what we've seen. Um, it's, it used to be back in the pre-COVID days, uh, a little more face-to-face. Now it's, it's a little more kind of like this, a Zoom kind of event or, or uh, that kind of a, an approach. So the platform has changed a little bit different in the, like you say, in the COVID era. But it's still one of those things that uh, we all recognize how important the uh, communication and that collaboration is. So you still have to make it happen however it happens. Does that interaction with law enforcement, are are you also periodically going to testify in court then on cases or is that somebody else is dealing with those issues? I do testify in court. It depends how you define often. (laughs) So the answer is yes. I'm just not sure how you define often. You sound like somebody that's been in the courtroom. (laughs) So interesting. I think that's interesting for, I think, our listeners, right? We have clinical physicians. We've got pathologists. We've got uh, students all listening to this podcast. So I think you really kind of give an interesting uh, flavor to another neat aspect of laboratory medicine, this opioid or opiate testing. What do you think is the future in, in your area? COVID-19 maybe has thrown a little bit of a wrench into things, but what does the future of uh, opioid testing look like? Well, you know, that's interesting because 
when you talk to people, you get a very different perspective, I think. One of the aspects that uh, a lot of people automatically see, and I'm going to talk about it, and then I'm going to turn it around and say, but. So we always talk about new technologies and new mass spectrometry, because a lot of what our laboratory does its testing in is, is mass spectrometry. And there's always new and more sensitive technologies become available. And there always seems to be a demand or a need to be able to find lower and lower concentrations of drugs, whether it be because we get these more high potency drugs that are out there. And so there's always that sort of demand and that need for that. And I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that it's gonna be going in that direction as the technology just improves. And I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, it just, that's the way it's gonna go. But what I think perhaps, especially with the prescription opioid um, side of things, not necessarily with the, the illicit one, but with the prescription um, side of things, I think we actually need to go back to the question with sort of that pain management aspect of it. Because there's obviously a lot of patients who are prescribed opioids and they need to be managed um, from the standpoint of, are they taking their medications? Are they taking them correctly? And that is a huge aspect of clinical management. And one of the questions right now is, what is an appropriate level of detection for those patients? Um, workplace drug testing has well-defined cutoffs. It's been like that for years. But that aspect in clinical practice for pain management has not been well defined. And I think that is something that needs to actually be investigated and as of yet hasn't been. Um, whether you call that the future, I don't know, but I think it's something that really needs to be defined. Yeah, no, that, I think that's really, uh, it's interesting. I'm glad you, you bring that up, right? Is this is really one of those key questions that we need to uh, answer. And it's not necessarily always the drive for the technology, but I, I think your point's well taken is the question is what's driving uh, our future. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, we've been rounding with Dr. Laura Lee Lingman, and we really appreciate you taking the time to discuss uh, opioid testing with us today. Yeah, it was my pleasure. So if you've enjoyed Lab Medicine Rounds podcast, please hit subscribe. We invite you to share your thoughts and suggestions via email. Please direct any questions to mcleducation at mayo.edu and reference this podcast. Until our next rounds together, we encourage you to continue to connect lab medicine and the clinical practice through insightful conversations. Mm -hmm.